Stephen Curtis Chapman is the most awarded artist in Christian music, with 58 Dove Awards, five Grammys, and 48 number one singles. I caught up with Stephen and his wife, Mary Beth, at his recording studio in Nashville. You started out more as a songwriter before you become a singer of the song, or what? Well, for me it was because my brother, uh, Herbie, was the singer, right. and he had the voice, mm. and my my voice, first off, was a guitar, um, was an instrument, and that's how I really sort of said what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. so I spent a lot of time with the guitar. My dad wrote songs. My dad and his buddies would get together and talk about it in the book, shut the you know kitchen door, and I'd hear them and put me up to the door, and they'd be recording these songs. So I thought, you know, I knew that was something really cool, and, and but I never thought of myself being able to do that until I saw a peer, somebody kind of my age, who'd written a song, and I thought, well, Maybe I, I could do that. Even then when I would play songs that I wrote, uh, I would notice just a different reaction from my friends. They would lean in a little bit more and listen to what I was singing as opposed to if I was singing a, you know, whatever, a James love. Taylor song or, yeah, <laughs> Puppy Love, Donny Osmond song. Um, so that, so that, I think that's where I found, I really began to find my voice. After 30 years as a singer and songwriter, Stephen has taken some time off to write his memoir, Between Heaven and the Real World, My Story. The stories that have had the deepest impact on me and one of the reasons I was excited to finally get to write my story, it's when I can read the story of others who are following Christ, who are, who are committed, but just are still on the journey, and they haven't arrived, and can be honest about that process. In his book, Stephen takes us from small town Paducah, Kentucky, all the way to Carnegie Hall. He's candid about raising a family, adopting three girls from China, and his 32-year marriage to Mary Beth. It took all of, I think, the drive home from the wedding, like two days after our wedding where I was crying all the way home and you're like, this isn't, this uh -oh. is going to be, yeah, we it's basically, gonna be like, this, we is gonna be yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a long life. This is going to be a long uh, life. A long life. A long life. But, but yeah, just to live, making a decision to live as authentically and talk when we're going to be interviewed, when we are going to write, that it is going to be an honest approach at life because we all have that stuff. We yeah. all, we are not, we're not immune Stephen and Mary Beth lost their youngest child, Maria, in a tragic accident at their home. Maria was running to meet her older brother, Will, as he was pulling into the driveway, and she was struck by his SUV. How many years ago was this now? Almost uh, nine. Almost nine. It's coming up on nine. Is, is, is the pain of that still there? Yes. It is? Yes. You talk about it in depth in the book, and you do talk about it publicly all the time. I share the story, you know, from, from my perspective of just that, you know, scene of us huddled, arms around each other, just looking at each other saying, we, we know this is going to be hard. We have no idea how hard or where this is going to go, but we have got to make this, to get through this together as a family. We're only going to make it together, holding on to each other and holding on to the promises of God. It almost is like God, in our case, gave us a shot of anesthesia to your body and to your heart in a way that you can survive, that you're, there's enough of a numbness, you're very much alive and very aware of eternity. I mean, heaven and the real world, there, I talk a lot about that. There's Heaven's never been more clear to me. I've never been more sure that we are made for eternity. And I talk about, you know, speaking that to the nurses and doctors standing around right there uh, after Maria had gone to be with Jesus. Where are you now? Where is it all now? Where's music? Where are you going? Do you know? Well, I start, start the book in, in Paducah, but I get quickly to Carnegie Hall, you know, in, in New York, where I, I said people came to me after I played at Carnegie Hall and said, you know, this had to be a dream come true for a kid from Paducah, Kentucky. And I said, really honestly, my answer was, no, I can't say honestly it's a dream come true because a kid from Paducah doesn't ever think to dream quite this big, mm -hmm. you know. So this journey has been beyond we, anything we could have asked or imagined. And we, you know, we, we want to continue honestly to be uh, just faithful with the story God's entrusted to us. Music, I'm sure, will be a part of that. Music has been his career, but Stephen is a man grounded in the truth of God's Word 
a common thread that's woven throughout his songs. Now there is no condemnation And now there is no guilt or shame It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's a promise that we have had to hold on to because so many moments, you know, in our story, and all of us have a story of life is anything but but tasting good at that moment or looking what we see does not look good. But even before then, I mean, can we really believe that we were still going to get to see the goodness of the Lord, that we were going to have grandchildren and we were going to stand at the, you know, the crib of our first grandbaby with tears in our eyes and with our arms around each other and say, we made it to this point. We're getting to celebrate this moment together, this new beginning, the new life that God has given us and the beauty that has and is coming uh, from the ashes, uh, even as we're hoping and longing for what's yet to be realized when God finally wipes every tear from our eyes. Now 